I'm Ted Wigga and welcome to another edition of Culinary Corner at WYE The Network. If you recall, our intention with this show is to bring you closer to your kitchen and bring your kitchen closer to you. And the way in which we intend to do that is to help you overcome some of your fears. Tonight, we're going to overcome two, actually, of my fears. We're going to overcome salmon, which I've never been really sure how to make it, uh, what it's supposed to look like, what it's supposed to smell like when I buy it. So we're going to investigate some of those things. And we're going to cook that salmon in paper, another thing that is a little intimidating for me. So if you're like me, you'll want to stay tuned tonight as Chef John shows us how to cook salmon in paper. And by paper, just so you know, I don't mean this kind of paper. Although, it's okay if you thought that. I did too. But, I mean this kind of paper. This is parchment paper, and parchment paper is special paper that you use for baking meats and fish and even vegetables. And it doesn't have wax on both sides. And, well, I guess at this point we'll just let Chef John take over and he'll show us what to do next. I have prepared a salmon and papillote with pomegranate sauce. So, to prepare this, let me show you the ingredients. Alright, so to prepare this dish, I have two salmon fillets right here. On top of that, I have one shallot that I just sliced, a few sprigs of thyme, two green onions that I just sliced. You could decide to use leek in place of this, four tablespoons of dry white wine, one carrot sliced, four slices of lemon, four garlic cloves that I sliced, extra virgin olive oil, and salt and pepper to taste. So, let's prepare these packages here. Hi, I'm Ted Wigga and I'm here for Culinary Corner on location at JP Seafood Company here in Alameda, California. Today we're going to talk about salmon, how to buy it, what it should look like, what it should smell like, and really where it comes from. I'm here with Nicole, Nicole Menzies. Nicole, hi. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for having <laughs> us. So we've got a salmon here. Yes. This is what a real salmon looks like. Yes, this is our wild king salmon, which is caught locally right outside the bay, up you know, the cool Pacific Ocean. Um, this is wild, just fresh, caught not too long ago. It's still got the slime on the, the scales, so you know it's good to go. Um, so is it slime something we want to look for when we're catching it ourselves? Yeah, salmon and trout are both naturally really slimy. So you don't want to get the slime off because it just adds to the trout aspect, the flavor, and, you know, what it's, the fresh trout should be. Okay. So it should be a little slimy, the scales should be hard to come off, and just look good. And that's the same for salmon as well then? Yes. So that slimy feel. Mm -hmm. So trout and salmon have that in common. So when you get it, you don't wash that off. What do you do with it? It comes off naturally. I mean, you don't want to like put it out with the skin fully washed. But when you're preparing your salt, give it a nice wash down, get the scales off. Unless, you know, you want to eat that, but I don't think many people do. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's good. It just keeps the freshness. Okay. So the salmon traditionally, do you keep the skin on when you cook it? You can do it either way. If you want to barbecue it, um, the skin is really good to keep on just a flip it a little bit more. With okay. the skin off, it's still going to cook just as well. Um, you won't be able to flip it as much. It'll break a little easier. The salmon will, um, the skin will come off naturally when it's cooked. Oh, so okay. it's not like it's stuck on there forever. It'll okay. peel off itself if you're not cooking it. Okay. So is this an average size? This is a pretty good one. I think it's about 10 pounds, so okay. that's wow. pretty that's average. Pretty yeah, I mean, okay. it's beautiful. Um, yeah, they can be anywhere up to like 30. We've seen big, big ones, like 25 in here. So 
Okay. Who knows how big they are in the ocean. But. So you guys have your people out there every day fishing yeah, we and get, bringing in the catch. Mm -hmm. cool. We get commercial fishermen that go out on the boat. We try to steer away from them just because they're out there for you know two, three days at a time. Wow. It's, the, the fish isn't going to be as fresh as someone who's okay. gone out that morning and caught it. That makes sense. So, yeah, okay. we buy from a lot of local fishermen and get it off their boats and they come bring it to us and we so. play it as we need it. Okay. So this is, I know this is, has kind of a firm, firm feel to it. Yes. So does that mean that it's healthy? Does that mean, what, do, what does that signify? So inside, there's the stomach lining. In, uh, it should be nice and firm, not no breakage, um, nothing gross like that. So here is one that we cut just a few minutes earlier. Okay. And see, this is nice and red. There's no breakage in this. You know, it's not falling apart. It looks very nice beautiful. Firm yeah, it's not, yeah. you know, giving in. It. it doesn't look bruised or damaged. It's just nice, fresh, okay. solid. And is this called a fillet? Yeah, this is called a salmon fillet. Okay. And, there's and is that typically how it's sold in fillet form? Yes, or you can buy it the whole side. Okay. So it just depends on how you want it, how much you want. Um, there's different parts. So this would be the shoulder piece. So this is right up here by the collarbone. It's a little, it's used more, so it's more flavorful and just more muscly. And then you can go down to the tail pieces, which are also very delicious, um, but they're not as thick. These center cuts right here are very good, more uniform in their size. Yeah, so that's five inch thick. Yeah, okay. It's nice, firm. So where is the most flavor? Is that in the shoulder or is it that in the center cut? <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on the texture you want. The, the this is going to be a little more musclier and uh, a little more tissue, whereas the center cuts are going to be more flaky. And, uh, okay. So when you want to, when you're buying it at the grocery store now, as I understand it, the grocery store usually uses farmed fish. Mm -hmm. it, how is that different? Farm fish. Exactly how it sounds. Um, here in America and other countries. It's just a giant breeding ground for the fish where they all swim together. And, okay. Um, so it's just a big vat where yeah. they grow fish, basically. Basically, yeah. Okay. And they're fed, you know, fish food, whatever they uh, So is the flavor is. different? Is the texture different? How is it exactly different than what you guys get every day here that's fresh? It really depends on where you get it from. Like, we get our um, farm salmon from British Columbia, which has more strict guidelines as on their uh, farm fish. So it's raised like a natural fish in the, uh, just in a contained environment, or controlled okay. environment. Okay. So it has free range, it's in a beautiful river. So in Canada, it's a little more like wild fish. Okay, um, closer to, yes, closer what, to we're, what we're looking at yeah. here. Okay. Um, but I mean, farm fish can, it, it may have color added, whereas um, wild does not, okay. but can have more antibiotics added to it, which may not necessarily be terrible for you, but I mean. So farmed is a little um, more processed. Yes. This actually just comes right out of the this ocean. Is, it's like this is organic and this is a okay. more processed, the farm fish. Okay, and I think most people can understand that. Yeah. So really you want to try to get farmed um, that's out of British Columbia or fresh if yeah, possible. Yeah, no color added, okay. uh, just because they, you know, insert chemicals and carbon dioxide just to make it really bright. That, that pinky sandy yeah, color. Yeah. So then, is do they have to tell you that? Like if I'm at the local grocery store, do they have to say that color was added? Most of the time it? they do just have it labeled. You know, okay. it'll either say previously frozen wild king salmon, or if they have previously frozen farm raised color added, okay. it should usually say. Okay. So they'll know what you're getting. So we want to try to find a local fishmonger, really, yes. to get the freshest, most succulent fish that we can. Yeah, and I, that goes for all food you get. I mean, you want to go to a fisher to get the best quality right. fish. You want to always go to a fish source. monger. Yeah, exactly. I always say that. Yeah, and local is always something to really strive for. I'm also of the belief, too, that you buy the best that you can afford, whatever that means yeah. at the time. So what about the pricing of salmon? Does that fluctuate on it a really daily does. basis? It depends on how often we get the fish, who we get it from, but okay. it can range within a couple dollars week to week, just depending on how much we get it for and how much it's 
how much they're catching. Okay. So. All right. Okay. So, it, what it, what are we looking at for ranges usually throughout the season? Is there a season? Yes. Uh, the salmon season starts. I want to say March okay. around or spring and ends pretty close to what, October. Yeah, we got yeah, okay. left. So. Okay. So during during that season, is there a range typically, or really again, does it just really depend on all those factors? How much fish is out there? How many people are catching it? How much you get? Yeah, it also depends on um, they they have breaks in between the salmon season, so only um, not commercial fish, but just people going out fishing can go and fish for salmon, oh, okay. whereas the commercial so like fish cannot. Open so season. Yeah, they have anybody. breaks. Okay. You know, with like one week, you cannot farm or uh, fish for salmon and then it'll open up for two weeks and then it'll close for two oh, weeks and it just sort of fluctuates as to where you get your salmon. You I never knew that. That's yeah. interesting. And that happens from March until October during yeah. that whole season. Correct. It's like an on and off sort of thing. How are you notified of that? Is there like a schedule that's put out in advance or I do? I believe so, yeah. They, does somebody just say, oh no, you can't fish this week? Oh no, there, it's the guidelines, the okay. regulations. So we get contact with fishing day. We yes. call, they open up. Okay. Every other week, and then all August, the seasons went. Okay. They get it, they try, they try to sustain the rest of the food so we can drive the rest of everybody else. Okay. And we have Matt off camera here, um, who's kind of helping us out. Matt is uh, one of the brains behind the operation here. Um, so as is Nicole, obviously. So, Nicole, when when I come to you and I, I want to get some, some salmon, what am I looking for? So obviously every fishmonger in the world should be um, honest and tell you the truth, but really how can we as consumers, how can I come to you and really know the information that I need to buy some good salmon, whether it's a side of salmon or whether it's some filets, what do I want to look for? You really want to look for the bright rich color, uh, the brighter, Such the fresher. This kind. Yeah, this is a nice color for salmon. Um, also, the texture you want it to be firm, not breaking apart. You don't want it to smell like fish. If it if it smells like fish, then it's probably not as fresh as it can be. Okay. So the fish should smell like the ocean. Okay. Um, so right. smell is also a big key, and just kind of we buy with our eyes. So really, That's what looks good, good to you. That's um, a very good point. So I do notice uh, that there is some, you know, there's some wetness to it. Mm -hmm. um, and as we had talked about earlier with this, the not real slime, but that kind of texture on the outside, that, that sort of slimy feeling outside, that's okay. Yeah, that's good. You don't want your fish to be dried out, okay. looking like... So you want some of those natural oils yes. to be available to be felt, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to being all dried up. So when I, so I'm going to buy some fish from you today, take it home, so what am I going to get? I'm going to get a couple of fillets, and what do I do with that? How do I store that? What is the best way for me to take that home and make sure that I still, you know, if I don't use it today, that maybe a day or two from now, I still have a really good piece of salmon that I can use. Yeah. So some places they put it directly on the butcher paper that they sell it with, with like maybe a wax paper that they grab it with. Okay. Um, some places like here we use plastic bags, so we'll take the fillets, put it in the bag, and wrap it up in butcher paper. Um, you can keep that in your crisper, the cool part of your fridge, for three days, and it'll three still days. hold its integrity very well. So how do I know when, so if it's day four and I'm kind of pushing it there, mm -hmm. how do I know when that fish is no longer good? It'll start to lose the color, it might turn a little more brown, um, and it won't smell very good. It, it'll get a little slimy in the bag, you know, as meat loses its moisture, it might sure. be a little trippy. So if you rinse it and it's it smells fine, it looks good, it's, it still is pretty firm, then it's good to eat. Um, okay. If it's smelling bad, you know, just obvious signs of it sure. not looking as fresh as it can be, you probably don't eat it. I mean, I wouldn't push it past three or four days. If, even if you're getting it from a fishmonger. Okay. If, if you're buying it in a store, like a Safeway or something, maybe two days. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Is there a difference between how long you can keep farmed fish versus fresh fish, or is it pretty much the same? I would probably keep the uh, wild a little bit longer just because it's cut daily, it's cut from whole fish, whereas, um, whereas the farmed salmon, it, can be cut daily, but it's still going to be shipped from somewhere else. Okay. Maybe free filet, maybe, you know, it's okay. a whole fish, but just depends on how fresh you get it. 
Okay. All right. And how are you guys doing with salmon? Are you guys? It's very popular here. Yeah. Yeah. People come craving for salmon. So it's been a good season. <laughs> Absolutely. A good yeah. season. Good. Nicole, thank you so much. Any any last words that you want to share with our viewers on salmon? What to do with it? Experiment. Don't be afraid of it. You know, people say they don't like fish, but maybe they just haven't had the right fish. So salmon's a really good nutritious fish to be eating that, you know, can be made in so many different ways that Great. it's worth eating. Great. Nicole, thank you so much. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. And um, I guess that's it. So things to remember are you want to buy something that has a firm texture to it when, when you push on it. Um, and you also want to make sure that the color is nice. You want to buy something that um, is natural colors, not color added. And you really want to keep it no longer than three to four days. Um, if you're buying fresh and if you're buying uh, farmed, you want to keep it maybe a little less, two days maybe. So as always, I think you know a good thing is to find a fishmonger that you trust, as with any type of produce, meat or whatever, vegetables. Um, find a fishmonger that you trust and ask for their advice, ask for their guidance. And really, as Nicole was saying, you know, experiment. You know, try to play with it a little bit. See what you can do. And, you know, I haven't always been a fan of salmon, but I can tell you that as I learn more about the salmon and sort of what to do with it and how to work with it, um, I, I am enjoying it much more. So there you have it. That's our quick tip. All right. So to prepare our salmon packages right here, salmon, salmon, I mean, uh, yeah, that's one thing I little have, I mean, in, in Italian, you say salmone, so, uh, I keep saying salmon, I know the pronunciation is supposed to be salmon or something, but yeah, bear with me, however, moving on, I have a piece of parchment paper, I just cut, I just gave it enough space here in this parchment paper for me to be able to place this salmon or salmon, if you want to put it, in the middle of this paper and fold it over to give you enough space. However, it depends on the, si on the size of your salmon, and we're going to show you right now how to do it. Excuse me if I keep pronouncing that wrong, but however, moving, moving along. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like my Italian pronunciation just gets in the way sometimes. However, okay, let's just start off with this. We're going to grab some of this green onion here and just place it in the middle here of a parchment paper. That's sufficient. Like I said, it depends on how many packages you're creating. All depends on you. You're creating two. Use the amount of ingredients I'm using here. You're creating more. Cut up more onion. Cut up more garlic. Cut up more uh, carrot. <laughs> I think you figured that one out. However, okay. After that, let me just grab some shallot. Place it on top as well. Get some carrot. Get it with some garlic. All right. What I want to do now? Just want to drizzle these vegetables with a little bit of olive oil, and then want to grab one of these salmon fillets, and place it on top. Done with this. Just want to season the salmon, salt, and pepper to taste. top. Last thing, let's grab some of this thyme and just remove some of these uh, leaves here and just like that, sprinkle on the thyme on top of the salmon. Just break it apart. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is the beauty about cooking on Christmas. No stress. Just easy made homemade dishes right here. Not restaurant quality, <laughs> just homemade cooking. That's good enough. Okay, done with this. We're just going to grab this package and fold over the parchment paper in this way. Just turn it over. 
And then we're going to start crimping it. At the edge, grab the edge of the paper, fold it over, do the same. Now, I know there's a lot of people that like to create this heart shape with their parchment paper. And, uh, yeah, there's different ways of cutting your paper before you start crimping it. But I prefer just to cut it in a rectangular style. Don't matter. It still works the same. Why go through the additional stress? After that, just grab the edges of the paper. Keep folding it over. Fold over and crimp. Fold over and crimp. moving around and crimping your paper until you reach the edge. Alright, that's about good because we want to leave a small opening here. We're going to crimp this later and close it because Later we're going to add some white wine just before this goes in the oven. So now that we're done with this package, let me create the other package and then we'll be ready to cook this. And since this is her package and she wants some lemon, I am going to layer a few slices of lemon on top of hers. Like I said, the amount of ingredients or the types of ingredients that you place inside this package, it all depends on you. I'm using these because these are the aromatic ingredients that I'm choosing to use tonight. However, try this recipe out with different types of vegetables. You'll be astounded to see how different flavors you can achieve by changing the vegetables that you're using. So, done with this, again, fold over, and start crimping. Okay, we're almost at the end here, and like I said, leave a, leave a hole at the end for you to pour in some wine later. Let me close this on. Uh, yeah, my oven is ready, so we'll be to cooking it in just a minute. Okay, so last step before we place these in the oven, I'm just gonna grab this dry white wine. I'm gonna add the equivalent of two tablespoons of this white wine inside of this package. That's about good. Just put it nice in there. And then we're just gonna finish crimping it off. Make sure to get a nice seal on there because later all these vegetables, that wine, that fish, they're all going to steam inside this package and all that flavor is just going to absorb into the fish. So, we're finished with this package, we're going to do the other one, then we're going to place everything in the oven. Okay, here we go. Alright, last of the white wine. Finish cream. All right, let's cook this. So we finished our salmon packages and we are ready to cook them now. So I have my oven here preheated at 350. What I want to do, I have these two packages. I just placed them on top of this pizza tray. You could decide to use any tray of your choice. Just place them on top of something so you could put them into your oven to cook. So we're just going to set them in here. And we want to let these go 20 to 25 minutes or until that salmon becomes nice and flaky. One point of advice, if you don't have parchment paper, you can use aluminum foil. Just make sure, either use parchment paper or aluminum foil. Do not use wax paper. Parchment paper is perfectly safe. 420 degrees to 450 degrees in your oven. 
You go higher than that, you might have a problem. You're using wax paper. The wax on that paper has a low smoking point. So uh, I guess you can figure out where that's going. However, just a little point of advice I want to give you. We're going to let this cook. Now we're going to start preparing our sauce. All right, so while our salmon is sitting in the oven cooking, what we want to do now, we just want to prepare a simple pomegranate sauce. So let me show you the ingredients that I have right here to create this with. I have one cup of pomegranate juice, a sprig of rosemary, a sprig of thyme, and some honey that I'm going to be using about three tablespoons of. So let's move over to the stove and let's start creating this while we're cooking up our salmon. Okay, so to create our sauce, I have this pan warming up a medium high heat. I just want to grab this one cup of pomegranate juice, just pour it in here, and then I'm going to add this thyme together with my rosemary. Now, we want to let this pomegranate juice reduce by half, and then we're going to sweeten it up with some honey. So, let's bring it up to a boil, let it reduce. When it gets to that point, we'll get back to you. Okay, so our pomegranate juice has reduced by half here. What I want to do next is just thicken it up and sweeten it up with some honey. This all depends on your taste. So let's start off with a small amount here, with the amount of one tablespoon. That's good. I just mix it in here. Taste it. Mm. That's sufficient. Okay, I'm gonna shut down the heat here. I used one tablespoon of honey to sweeten this up. If you want to add more, you want more sweetness, go ahead and do that. It's all up to your taste. Last thing you want to do, let's just discard this rosemary and this thyme from inside the sauce. Our salmon is about ready to be pulled out of the oven. So we're going to pull this out, we're going to show you the finished product. Okay, so we finished with our salmon and papillote with pomegranate sauce and here we go. I hope you uh, can see it correctly because if I tilt it, this sauce is just going to spill over. Because what I did, I just grabbed this salmon, pulled it out of the package and placed it on top of this plate here. And later just drizzled on top some of that wonderful pomegranate sauce that I created. It mixed together with that white wine that was in the package and now you have a beautiful sweet sauce that just pairs perfectly with this salmon. Okay, so I'm here with the Balmenzies at JP Seafood Company in Alameda. It's at the port of Oak and Central. And um, Nicole just helped me buy some salmon and actually some crappy too, which we use for a different recipe. But we've got some salmon. John, you know, showed us exactly what we need to do with it. You can use it in paper. Remember, it's not newspaper. It's, it's uh, paper, parchment paper that we want to cook it in. So, Nicole, thank you again. It was really a pleasure. And I'm sure we'll see you again. I hope so. Thank you for the fish. And thank you for the information. Absolutely. So, we'll see you next time on Culinary Corner. And until then, take care. Thanks for joining us. We're grateful. That was so much fun, I almost forgot. If you would like a copy of this week's recipe, or if you would like to suggest a recipe, or if you'd like to be a guest host on a future episode, please send us an email to WYE the network at WYEnterprises.com. Should be right there, right now. Okay, I'm off to make this beautiful salmon. Beautiful, look at that color, look at the texture. I'm out of here. Thank you for joining us. We are grateful, and we will see you next time when you meet us on the corner, the culinary corner, right here on WYE the network. Good night.